Hey brothers and sisters, so on the night of May the 26th, I had a dream that me and many others were in some kind of cave or tunnel that had flowing water. And we were on one side of the cave and then suddenly someone in our group spotted a very large alligator or crocodile on the other side of the cave. And we knew we had to get out immediately. And we knew the moment that it saw us that it would come after us. And there was this opening in the cave that was towards like a summit. And we could see that there was a boat waiting to rescue people out of the cave. I swam very quickly to the opening and told everyone to get to a high peak and get on top of something that is much higher to get away from the alligator's reach while we await our rescue and when I woke up I didn't really think too much about it but I did share it with a sister and she told me that it reminded her of Psalms 27 5 through 6 which says for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. And I thought that was such a beautiful, amazing verse. And the next day I went to church. So on Sunday, I was at church and just worshiping the Lord. And then all of a sudden I had this vision of someone on a rock inside of a cave just kneeling down in prayer while beneath them were all of these alligators and just danger beneath them but there was an opening in the cave in the shape of a cross and the light was coming through And that person was just taking refuge. And so I had this vision. And after I had the vision, of course, it reminded me of that dream. And I was wondering, okay, well, maybe that dream was from the Lord or maybe it was significant. And so today, this morning, I actually drew this picture of the vision that I had yesterday. And I drew this picture And then I decided to start reading a book that I need to read for teaching next year. And this is the book that we are all reading together. And so I picked it up and started to read it. And in the very first chapter, it said this sentence, a huge politically correct risk averse fortress with alligators in the moat. And I thought, wow, that it reminds me of the vision of being in this cave, this dangerous place with alligators all around, but yet I was positioned on a rock. It reminded me of this scripture, how he shall hide us and set us high upon a rock and our enemies are all around, but we are lifted up above our enemies. This vision also reminded me of a dream, one of my very first dreams that I absolutely knew was from the Lord. I was a more immature believer at the time, a babe in Christ, and didn't even understand hearing from the Lord. But I had this dream, and immediately when I woke up, I knew it was from the Lord. And I had there was such an urgency behind it. I had never had such a vivid dream. And I definitely believe that dream is pointing to the times that we are headed towards. So this is the dream that I was referencing um, that was very similar. One of the first dreams that I ever had from the Lord. And in it, crocodiles were devouring people in this river and I got out just in time and was trying to warn people but they weren't listening and this river was headed towards what looked like Disney World or Paradise but I knew that it was a deception so if you want to listen to the stream I will have the link in the description box and you can watch it 
So I believe this vision is a depiction of those who are waiting and longing for the blessed hope. Those who are in prayer, who are in the secret place with the Lord in fellowship with him, hidden under the shadow of his wings in peace, even despite the surrounding enemy and what is below like these um, crocodiles or alligators that are swarming below but we can still have peace in the midst of a fearful situation we can look all around the world right now and there's numerous things to be fearful of and to be terrified of but those who are in christ have no need to fear because the god of all creation the sovereign God that holds everything together is our Father, and He is in us by the Holy Spirit, and we can rest in His presence without fear, knowing that nothing can happen apart from the Lord's will. He is able to protect us, and to live is Christ and to die is gain for those who belong to him. So there is absolutely nothing to fear. And we await the promise revealing of the Son, Jesus Christ. And I believe that's what this opening in this cave represents. Right now we are in this world and it is dark and we are sojourners. And this place is not our home but we have hope, and that hope is through Jesus Christ. He made a way where there is no way. He came and lived a sinless life. God in the flesh, perfect, died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose again so that we could live eternally with Him. We could be reconciled with God. Our sins could be washed away. So this opening in this cave, this cross, represents that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. And that hope is sustaining us. That sunlight is breaking through and we are covered by His light. His light is in us. Even in a dark place like this cave, we are covered by His light. And one day He will appear and remove us from this dark place to be forever with him and we will see him face to face. So I believe this vision is a representation of where we are, what we're longing for and looking towards and our blessed hope. In Philippians 3.20 it says, For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Titus 2, 11 through 13, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 1.10, it says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. In 1 Corinthians 1, 7 through 9, it says, So that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He will sustain us in this dark world, in this cave that we are and underneath this covering of the curse and of sin, he will sustain us until the ver very end, until the revealing of Christ. In Isaiah 25, verse 6, it says, 
On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation.